Hello everyone and welcome to this installment of the White Dove Ministries video blog. There are a number of revelations that are coming right now and I'd like to spend the entirety of our time talking about it. Hopefully give you a little bit of a positioning uh, to, to posture yourself for the remainder of this year and uh, moving forward into 2012. I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty encouraged, spiritually speaking, about what's about to take place and, and uh, what the Lord is doing. I have had a number of uh, dreams and revelatory encounters where the Lord has been speaking to us about uh, this remnant company of people that are about to emerge, uh, some of the attributes of what that company is going to look like. And uh, in fact, I've mentioned a number of, of those uh, items uh, in the, of the course of last uh, several SOS meetings that we have done. I, I'm in the midst of doing a series on the book of Revelations. Uh, we've had several segments so far. And I just broke down Revelation chapter 1 and uh, the commissioning of John to write this, the, the seven letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor. And, uh, and in this past SOS, I did uh, a segment on the Ephesian age and uh, eating from the tree of life. And it's a pretty fascinating study. In fact, the Lord has had me in the book of Acts quite a bit lately, and I'm going to do another segment in December's uh, SOS meeting called the Ephesian Age, a prophetic model. And I feel that we're about to um, apprehend or address some of the principles that were utilized in the early church that will have direct relevance with where we are today. And uh, we know, and it has been prophesied, that a new prophetic model is on the horizon. I believe that. We've prophesied it. I believe there's going to be a different uh, style of ministry. I believe the way uh, what we have called conferences will be done differently. I'm looking at them now as something like a kingdom gathering or something of that nature, just the gathering of the saints in certain regions to begin to promote the revelation of Jesus Christ and His kingdom. Uh, whatever title you want to give it, it'll be of a different structure, a different nature. <clears throat> I even believe that ministries will be set up somewhat differently. And, and uh, one of the main things that I believe will be taking place is there it will be the establishment of the plumb line. Uh, truth that is pure, direct from heaven, uh, has not been mingled with the thoughts and ideas of man. And, and I'm after that. I'm contending for that. And I believe that there will be a number of places that will be structured that way. But in the course of studying that, I uh, have looked at, the, at Antioch as a, as a model. I believe there are profound uh, implications and truths that can be incorporated from the church of Antioch. But it's interesting, though, that when the Lord Jesus commissioned John, he only told him to begin with the church of Ephesus. That was the first uh, model, I suppose you might say, for the Gentile church age. And, and they did a lot of things right. They hated the deeds of the Nicolaitans. They would not tolerate false apostles and false apostleship. And, and yet the Bible says that even that very first church, just a few years since the resurrection of Christ, already departed uh, from their first love. And, uh, and what it means, to the, the first love means in the order of prominence. That's what the word first means, in the order of importance in your own mind, departing from your love from, for God. And I believe that's about to be reestablished in our generation, that, that the very most important thing that we will understand is just our relationship with the Lord. I know we have ministry to do, and I know we have a world to save and, and people that are sick that need to be healed and people that are oppressed that need to be delivered. I'm well aware of that. But I'm also conscious of the fact that if we can get the first thing, the most important thing right, then everything else will fall into order. So I believe there's a grace coming uh, at the end of 2011 and moving into 2012 where people will be able to establish their relationship. You know, it's an amazing study with, with this person, Jacob. Uh, in fact, I have a prophetic message that we did uh, uh, at, our, at our School of the Spirit, and I think I also did it at Chuck Pierce's, called It's Time for Seeing, Time for Deliverers, Time for Separation, and Time for Covenant. And, and it was taken from the book of Obadiah. Obadiah, well, chapter 1, of course, uh, verses 17 and 18 and verse 21. But it says in 17 and 18 that, the, that Jacob will be a flame of fire and Joseph a torch. And it will begin to consume the stubble. It's going to begin to consume the spirit of Esau. And I believe that separation is about to take place in the church. Um, what that means to me, just in a nutshell, is that, you know, Jacob had obvious character issues. <laughs> He was a supplanter. He deceived his own father uh, to get the inheritance. Uh, and yet a unique thing is said, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. Esau seemingly was pretty much a model son. He was a, a, a hunter, a man of the field, a very rough man. Uh, Isaac loved him. Uh, Esau had a right to the inheritance. 
That was the most prominent thing to understand, but he did not have a love for it. He had a right to the inheritance, but he didn't esteem his inheritance. Jacob, on the other hand, had a great love for the inheritance. He had a devotion. He had a desperation for God and, and to walk in covenant relationship with God in spite of the fact that he had obvious character flaws. And yet the Bible says the Lord loved Jacob. In other words, here's what I'm hearing the Lord say. What I want you to do is love me with all of your heart. I know we have problems, but if we will come to the Lord and enter into covenant relationship with him, he'll fix our flaws. We sometimes get the order in reverse. We want to try to fix people enough to get them to God. It's the other way around. If we can just find uh, a, a body of people that love the Lord, that love his covenant, that love the word, uh, they love all the word, the whole truth, the whole counsel of God, as Paul said, and are not denying healing or, or prophecy or tongues or the prophetic destiny of a generation and all these things that are clearly biblical affirmations of where we are today. That's, that's foremost. That's the most prominent thing, having our first love restored for the Lord Jesus and his word. To love the Lord is to love and esteem his word. I believe that. We cannot deny the word. The Lord recently told me that... Uh, to tell the people, uh, tell them my plan is not a cafeteria plan. And uh, that simply means we don't go down the line picking and choosing what we, what we choose to eat. Whatever he sets in front of us, that's what we're supposed to eat. All of his word, from Genesis to Revelation, is a model for us today, and we've got to esteem that word. So I believe that's coming. I believe a separation is coming. I believe the Lord is about to deal in this season with the spirit of Esau in the church. Esau promotes apathy and lethargy and uh, in a, a lukewarm spirit. I think you might even say the lukewarm spirit could be, could be identified with the spirit of Esau. And I believe that perhaps all of us have had some Esau in us. We've all come up in a Western world, and, and maybe uh, we've had to get some of that out of ourselves. And even, even still, there may be some element of that where people are having to get the spirit of Esau out of them. But, uh, but, but the fact of the matter is Jacob had a covenant. He, he found, he had a he had wrestling match with the Lord at, at Jabbok, the river Jabbok. And, and the Lord contended with him all night. And by the time he was done with him, he was no longer Jacob, the supplanter, but Israel, a prince with God and man. And I kind of feel like that will happen with us as well. That we can just turn to the Lord. He'll begin to deal with our issues. But we can begin to live in covenant relationship. The very day that Jacob received the blessing of that covenant from his father Isaac, he traveled a day's journey, laid his head upon a rock, and the Bible says the heavens opened and a ladder descended from heaven to earth and, and angels ascending and descending. And he saw the Lord. He saw the Lord as El Shaddai standing at the head of the ladder. And so I'm contending for that kind of a revelation. I'm contending for that kind of an encounter, a, a Damascus Road encounter, a Bethel experience, a Patmos Island revelation, something that's going to expand us, something that's going to increase us. And, and I believe for the remnant, uh, that is what's in store for us in 2012. I believe we're about to, to move into a fresh dimension of, uh, of our understanding and our walk and our mandate, even as a generation, uh, for where we are, are, are headed today. So, um, and finally, I'd like to just comment a little bit on, on verse 21 of, of Obadiah. Deliverers ascending Mount Zion. In some translations, it says saviors, but I, I like deliverers. Deliverers ascending Mount Zion. Moses was called a deliverer, and I believe the deliverers that are being positioned to ascend Mount Zion today will be messengers. The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 1 that he held the seven stars in his right hand, and those seven stars were messengers, angels it says, but the word angels, angelos, means messengers. They were human agencies that were messengers of the kingdom. And that's really what the Lord is after, messengers. Yes, we'll be apostolic and prophetic and evangelistic and pastoral and all of that, but I believe that there's going to be a message, a very specific and unique message. In fact, we're going to be hosting a conference, or not a conference, a gathering, a New Year's Eve uh, gathering um, with uh, Stephen Shelley uh, in, in Smith Station, Alabama, this coming uh, December uh, 30th, 31st, and January the 1st. I believe it's going to be significant. I believe there's going to be the commissioning of, of uh, deliverers to ascend Mount Zion. And so you may go to our website or to revival.org to get information about that. Uh, I would love to see you join us to be there because I, th I feel that there's going to be something imparted by being in attendance. It's, if it's impossible to do that, then you certainly are welcome and free and, uh, to, to watch it by webcasting. But I'd love to see a good representation of the 
remnant company there. We can come together in unity and harmony and, and uh, contend for God so that we can launch 2012 uh, with a fresh dimension, with a uh, restoration mindset, and, and with the idea that we're about to be messengers with a message and a ministry, the ministry that goes with the message. And so that's what we're contending for. I hope you'll join us in our SOS December the 6th. I'm going to talk again about uh, a little bit more detail, a lot more detail, in fact, the Ephesian age as a prophetic model, even tying into that some of the things the Lord is speaking to us about Antioch as a model and how we're going to end better than we began. That's the, the latter glory of the, of the house will be greater than the former. I believe that with all of my heart. He will finish better than he started. That is the nature and the character of God. And uh, we're moving into this unique season that is unlike anything in history. And, and I'm, I'm contending and believing the Lord is going to anoint us with something fresh and powerful for this next year. So let me pray for you. Lord, just release your spirit right through the camera lens, right into the homes and computers and iPods and everything that people utilize to watch this message. I pray that a, an awakening would be released, an activation, an anointing, a mobilization, that you would position yourself and that there would be an anointing released to you to position yourself. Lord, release that to these people, I pray, that they would see change and transformation as we move into this next season of the Spirit in 2012 and that deliverers will ascend Mount Zion. Lord, let the deliverers come forth. Touch them with this message and awaken that seed of destiny in them, I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.